Okay, let's look at this F test um, statistic example in CSD. So Nipple et al. they examined the persuasive writing skills of children. So 60 children, 60 adolescents, and 60 adults. They examined whether the number of words in a persuasive writing sample differed as a function of age. So do adults produce more words than children and adolescents in a written language sample? So here's what they found. The children here are their means and standard deviations. The adolescents, their means, standard deviations, and the adults, their means and standard deviations. They set the alpha level as they wanted something equal to or less than zero, I mean, 0 0.0125. So here's what they found. They found um, here are the degrees of freedom. The um, so how many from the degrees of freedom? How many groups are there? There sh you should get three groups, right? Because it's three minus one for two. Now, how many participants are there? Okay, so then we see that follow-up testing indicated that the um, adults produce more words than both the children and adolescent participants. So we see this because their means are so much higher than the adolescent and adults. And it's saying P is less than 0 0.001, which is significant. Okay, so a complex ANOVA, if you see something written like a 2 by 4 ANOVA or a 3 by 2, you'll see numbers um, written like this. And so this is just telling you how many independent variables there are. So if I have a 2 by 4 by 2, that means that there's three independent variables. And then the number is indicating the levels of the independent variable. Okay, so in this example, a 2 by 4 ANOVA, the first independent variable is hearing. And there's two levels, okay? So there's um, cochlear implant and normal hearing. So that's the two. That's where we're getting the two. So it's one independent variable of hearing, and there's two levels, cochlear implant and normal hearing. A two by four, so the other independent variable we're looking at is listening environment. And we see a four here because there are four levels of the independent variable listening environment. So a 0, 0.5, 0.10, negative 5 dB. So there are four levels. Um, so looking at a 2 by 4 ANOVA on the average percentage correct scores from a word recognition task. So the two-way ANOVA reveals a significant main effect of hearing. Okay, so we're looking at hearing. Um, and a main effect of listening environment. Okay, so when we're just looking at the hearing, this is what we find. It is significant because we have um, a p-value of 0 0.001 and a main effect of listening environment. And we also get P is less than 0 0.001. There was also a significant interaction of hearing and listening environment. So you might ask, how do you know which listening environment is best? You can't determine this from an ANOVA. An ANOVA just tells you, is there something significantly different? But it doesn't tell you where those differences are. Okay? It doesn't tell you which, which one is best. So what you have to do is you have to do um, post hoc comparisons. So a, a significant main effect indicates that there's the presence of at least one significant difference between means. And post hoc um, analyses, they compare the levels of the independent variable for significance. Okay, so post hoc tests are really deciding where is that significant difference? Where does it lie? So NOVA tells us that there is something significant, but then the post hoc tests are looking at the different levels to find out where it's actually significant. 
So there's a couple of different um, types of post hoc tests for ANOVAs. People typically use something called the Bonferroni or a Tukey HSD or Newman Cools or a Sheffe method. Okay, so those were parametric statistics because we are assuming that um, the data that we're getting from these groups are normally distributed. Now, non-parametric statistics, these are distribution-free. So non-parametric inferential statistical methods are mathematical procedures for statistical hypothesis testing, which, unlike parametric statistics, makes no assumptions about the probability of the distributions of the variables being assessed. Okay, so we're not thinking that our data is going to fall out on a normal bell curve. So there's several different types of non-parametric statistics. And remember the type of data that we're talking about here is typically um, categorical data. So we have chi-squared, Cohen's kappa, man whitney u, Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, these are all different types of non-parametric tests. So we're going to look at a couple of these. Okay, um, a chi-square, this is a test statistic used to compare categorical data, so degrees of freedom is one. So there's lots of different types of chi-square tests for different types of designs. Um, and it doesn't indicate the strength of the difference. Okay, so a chi-square does not indicate the strength of any relationship that exists, nor the direction of that relationship. Chi-square only tells you that there is a difference or not. You have to do a phi coefficient after that to tell you the strength or the magnitude of the difference. Okay. With the chi-square analysis, it requires that the actual observed frequencies listed in a contingency table be compared to expected frequencies generated during the analysis um, or stated by the researcher based on some previous theory. So this is one way of examining whether there are differences between groups when the measurement is nominal data. Let's look at this example. So you have African American children and Caucasian children, and you're putting the number of children that are delayed and the number that are typically developing in a contingency table here. And these are the frequencies. In a chi-square analysis, you compare the frequencies that you get here and here. You compare those against the expected. Okay, so the expected on this case would be you'd have 10 in each group. 10 African American delayed, 10 African American typically developing, 10 Caucasian delayed, 10 Caucasian typically developing. Okay, so again, a chi-square does not indicate the strength of the relationship or the direction. It only tells you if there's a difference or not. Okay, so in this case, using two standard deviations below the normative mean, so 70, as a cutoff for language delay, Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test indicated similar percentages for African American children, 29.5%, and European American children, 23.1%, showing significant language delays. Um, so there's actually there, this should say not no significant language delays because these are similar percentages and the p-value is 0.33, which is not less than 0.05. So there's no significant difference between these two values. Okay, another type of non-parametric statistic is the Spearman rank order correlation. And this is the non-parametric approach to correlations. When we, um, we use measures of the independent-dependent variable that are not both interval or ratio. 
So for example, a teacher rating scale, if you've got a scale, you know, one to five, and, um, and then they have their intelligibility scores, the percent of words they understood. This we would want to see, based on their teacher rating, what is their intelligibility score? And if we want to see the correlations between these, we would use Spearman rank order correlation. Okay, so let's practice. So name that test statistic. So this experiment utilized a two by two design. The between subjects variables were participant type, so adult cochlear implant users and adult normal hearing listeners, and talker type, familiar and novel. Okay, so what type of statistic would you use for this? I hope that you are all saying to yourselves a two-way ANOVA. Um, you have, and this indicates that when you have a two by two design, you have two independent variables, right? So the number of numbers here, if it was a two by two by three, we would have three independent variables. This one is just showing we have two independent variables, and each of these independent variables have two levels. Okay, so the first one is participant type, and the types are cochlear implant users and normal hearing listeners. And then this independent variable, talker type, also has two levels, and it's familiar and novel. Okay, so we should do a two-way ANOVA on this. Okay, a group of 24 adults with a documented history of a moderate phonological language disorder that persisted through at least the end of first grade and a group of 28 from the same birth cohort in schools who were known to have had at least average articulation skills over the same period, the controls. As part of a larger project, these adults were interviewed about their educational and occupational accomplishments of their and those of their siblings. Okay, so um, what kind of statistic would you use for this? You should all say that you're going to use a um, a chi-square statistic. So this is, um, you're not comparing two groups like you are in an experimental design. You have to look at the type of data that you're using. Okay, a mixed design with um, with meters, so Western versus Balkan within subjects, and nationality, Turkish versus American between subjects, and age in half month increments between subjects. This would be a mixed design. This would be a mixed ANOVA because we have a between subjects here and we have within subjects within the same study. Okay, this study employed a between subjects design, talker accent, so native English and foreign Malayan served as the independent variable, and the participants, there were 15 participants that were age matched across the levels of the independent variable. So we have two groups here, we have English and we have um, Malayan. So the, we're comparing these two groups, so what test statistic do you think we want to use? You should all be saying a t-test. Okay, so in summary, we know that statistics are grounded in probability and employed during hypothesis testing. Um, researchers, we were, you know, looking to, not working to prove anything, but rather just support hypotheses. And the test statistic that you choose depends on the level of measurement for the dependent variable and the experimental design. And then P is the probability that you did not commit a type 1 error. Please read your textbook to, to reinforce this information because I know it's tricky information to grasp. And so I need you to read the text and listen to the lecture. And I will also post a study guide that will kind of narrow down what I'm looking for on the exam for statistics but you need to read in conjunction with listening to this to make sure you understand this.